there are babies. Come on, babe. Let's go. First walk. Hey, guys. We're out here along the lakey river thing, whatever it is here. Come on, pups. This is your first walk. You gotta learn how to follow. Come on. Come on, babes. Where are you going? Oops. They like to stay under your feet and then you trip over them. Come on. Come on, babe. Come on. Oh, no, you, you gotta walk, honey. Come on. We won't go too far because I know you guys can't walk. Uh oh. Come on. Come on, babies. There you go. Come on. She says, forgets you guys. I'm staying here. No, you're not. You gotta come. <laughs> Can't leave you there. Come on, baby. Come on. You coming? Come on. Come on, babe. go. You can't stay here. Come on. <clears throat> this is a cute one, huh? She looks like a little black pig. A little piglet. The other two follow. Alright, we're just going to go up here and maybe we go here where we went last time. And talk. Talk to the people. Oh, it's a little cooler here. Well, let's put put you down there. There. Come on. <laughs> You're so silly. Hi. Come on, dear Blue. Come on. Oh. Well, guys, I got some sad news. But don't worry. There's lots of good news, too. Today, I got so many things I got to tell you. I don't think I can pack it in all in one video. We're going to do a whole series, but this will be kind of like, um, uh, this will be like an introduction to a, a new series we're going to do. Now, I'll sit here as long as there's not a whole bunch of mosquitoes going to attack me. Sounds like a boat coming. Guys, stay tuned. Uh, I know some of you don't like to watch nature and, you know, just drift off and go on long walks and stuff and you're just waiting for the juicy stuff friends don't click off i've got some of the most juicy stuff you've ever ever heard in your life to talk about today so i want to get that out of the way so that everybody understands we're not just going to be sitting here looking at the birds and stuff because we got some really important things to say and uh i mean ho oh, oh, ho oh, buddy when you hear the stuff we're going to be talking about over the course of you know this video and I'm gonna pack it into this video too I mean we're gonna just really talk about it you know just kind of off the cuff here as we're sitting on here but uh, you know we're gonna go into it deep I, I imagine you know like we always do we'll have to go into a whole series on this hey beep say hi oh there's a little blue well here's the bad news and it's even kind of hard to even say um this is all i got left these three little puppies i don't have my other dogs anymore um when i went on that um that walk uh the other day yesterday or something we went on where i you know not a lot of you watched it but i was only gone for a couple hours you know well it was probably three hours i had to drive there and it took, I don't know, maybe it's four hours because, you know, I was probably took two hours doing my walk there and back up the hill and, you know, at least a half an hour to get there and half hour back. So, you know, there's a ways. But while I was gone um, and I and I, you know, the I've done this quite a few other times and I left the two mothers home, Miss Boots 
and Little Blue, they stayed home and they were watching their own puppies. And they protect them. And I don't worry about the puppies when the mommies are with them. And they all stay right there under the house and up on the porch. They don't go anywhere. And uh, when I got home, all the, pup, all the dogs, the two moms and all the puppies were gone. And I only had five left. So only two of them were gone. I, I, there was three that, three of the puppies were still there. And these are the three that, that, that we have. And I'm going to make sure that they're going to be with me. When I go on walks, they're going to be going with me. And uh, so I'm not going to, you know, leave them alone because I don't want to lose them. And I'm really sad. I went looking for them. I've gone everywhere called and, you know, I can't find them. I don't know what happened. Somebody came through and stopped the car and lured him, got him. I don't know how they did it. Honestly, I do not know because I don't believe they could. you could get my dogs into a car very easily. So I really don't know. It's like a big mystery. I'm not sure what happened. And I'm still hoping that somebody will call me or come by and say, hey, we found your dogs. But as of right now, we just got the, the three puppies. That's it. So as sad as that is, I'm trying to move on. And, and uh, you know, I'm praying about it and stuff. But I'm not going to, you know, I'm leaving it in the Lord's hands. Um, now, but as far as this other stuff that we want to talk about today, boy, you guys, you guys like to lick, don't you? <laughs> You're lickers. <laughs> yeah, little lickers. This one's the cutest little thing, isn't she? They're so sweet. Well, I don't even know where to begin with this, you know. We've done these videos. We've done quite a few of them. And we've talked about mysteries. Um, you know. What we've seen is that um, just about everything that we were all, what we were told in this world is an bald face lie I think I got a lot of you on board with what I'm saying my subscribers I think believe and understand the things that we've been showing you from the scriptures I think that the entire world is beginning to come around to some of this I don't think it's just us anymore you know I mean remember Christianity originally were Gnostics even though most people don't want to admit that early Christianity were what we would today call paganism. There's been a lot of disinformation for 2,000 years since that occurrence. And it has been so much disinformation that what we have got now is we believe in the exact opposite of what we were originally believing in everything. God is the devil and the devil is God. That's how bad it is now. We've covered a lot of that. And for some of you who've not watched my videos, I'm sure that when I say that, you're just ready to click right off immediately. And listen, I want to, I want to, I want to go slow with this. I understand your misgivings or your, 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 <clears throat> um, your, your, your shyness about this and, and your immediate reaction. I can only imagine that the devil is God, right? Are you saying that the true deity is evil. That's absolutely not what we're saying. In fact, again, again, just the opposite. What the world wants you to believe is that God is the evil one. He said, what are you talking about? Okay, we've gone through so much of this, but I'm going to start here today. Just like we usually do. For those of you who don't understand, what we teach here is that, that what the Bible teaches actually is that Yahweh in the Old Testament made a covenant with mankind. It was called the Old Covenant. And it was a covenant of vengeance, wrath, hate. His... <coughs> Excuse me, I think I got a mosquito up my... <clears throat> in my throat. Um, his name was Jealous. That is his name. In the, in the commandments, Yahweh says, I am Jealous. 
My name is jealous. It says it that way. This is my name. And all of his commandments are about vengeance and death, killing everyone, and, you know, all of this. And I'm not going to go through the whole spiel on that. I've done so many videos, and most of my subscribers understand that. But we're going to start there. Now, recently, we've been getting a little deeper, I think. Um, probably going back two, three, four months ago, we started talking about the holy whore. What, Dave? The holy whore? <laughs> yeah. The word in Hebrew for harlot is exactly no difference whatsoever. It is the word elsewhere throughout the Bible, hundreds of times, they translate holy. The the sanctuary, the holy sanctuary, is the harlot sanctuary. Why? It's because that's where the original harlot used to perform her duties in the temple. It was a priesthood, and they had a virgin, they had a, a harlot. Now, it's going to really shock you how we put all this together and how... You see, it's called a mystery in the Bible. It's called a mystery. And there are two mysteries. The Apostle Paul mentions two. He mentions the word mystery several times. And we've talked about there being seven mysteries. And you can actually find seven places in the New Testament where it talks about the mysteries. And it seems to be talking about seven different aspects of that, that mystery. But in reality, there's just these two basic mysteries. And one is called the mystery of godliness. And the other is called the mystery of iniquity. Well, again, we're thrown off base, off course from what we're uh, you know, from reality because immediately they throw in a word that that is the opposite of what it means and they do this a lot. The word G-O-D not only is not the correct word, it's not the word in Greek, it's not the word in Hebrew, it's not the word in, in English that we should be using, but it is a Scandinavian word for the devil. Okay? We've covered that in many other videos. But I'm just showing you real briefly, as we, before we get started here, that everything you've been told, I mean, for instance, Lucifer, how many people do you know, and I'm sure yourself even may have said, you may have actually believed this yourself, um, we've been taught that um, um, Lucifer means the devil. Lucifer is, is the great devil, right? He's the evil one. <clears throat> well, interesting, because if Yahweh is, the, is the, the deity of hate, as he claims, and the, the vengeance God, of the God of wrath, the God of the Old Testament, that, that holding your soul a ransom, <laughs> the puppies have found the water over there. They're holding your soul. He's holding your soul ransom. Jesus came to deliver and purchase you, redeem you from the devil, not from his own father. Jesus said to the Sanhedrin, your father's the devil, he's a liar, he's a murderer. He's talking to them, the 72 at the Sanhedrin. Jesus chose other 72, a different 72 than the ones they had. And they, and we've done videos about this, they became a governing power that made decisions. James was at the head of that in Jerusalem up until 70 AD. Now, Lucifer, then, literally means light. But now, if you accept and understand, once you come to understand the Old Testament, it's about this old covenant of that Paul calls a, a curse and a bondage. Ye who want to be under law, do you not know it is slavery? And so forth. We are not under law. All things are lawful, Paul says. We're under grace. We're under the truth. We're under the love of Christ. Just forgive your, your neighbor. The Lord will forgive you of all things you may have done in error or mistakenly which is what the word sin means. Make a mistake, miss the mark. Um, fall off the path, transgression, to veer off the path, or even to fall down. But when we fall down, we get back up. The Lord loves us. We're like the prodigal son. He, he will never forsake us. He is love. He says, I do not come to condemn you. You have one that condemns you, that is Moses, but I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. We could go on and on and on. And the Apostle Paul says it is a free gift, and those who reject the free gift the love of the truth that they might be saved 
will then receive the strong delusion and they'll remain under the curse of the law. And this is why the wrath of this God is coming and the only way out of it, according to the scripture, is to receive salvation, which means the deliverance. He promises to deliver us. It's not some fuzzy feeling salvation. It's not some mind game. It's not some oozy feeling. It's literally being delivered from what? The wrath to come. The wrath to come is the judgment that comes from the law, from this world. This is, it represents this world. Death is in this world. We must be delivered from this world. His kingdom is no part of this world. Jesus is a different deity. We do not worship one deity. We worship a trinity, a father, a son, a holy ghost. And these three act as one because we're all one in the one universal deity. However, Yahweh says, I am the only deity. I don't recognize anyone else as Savior. I am Savior and there is none else. I am God and there is none else. There is no one beside me, no one with me. And yet Jesus said, I was with beside the Father from the beginning. But so was the Holy Spirit, which is feminine gender in most every language. And going back to Proverbs 8, Sophia, the wisdom, who was beside or with the Father from the founding, before the founding of the world, from the beginning, who was the architect of the universe, she says, I will teach you. Listen to my wisdom. Most people think that it's talking about the law of Moses, and that's not true. The law of Moses is not a feminine, feminine gender, and it, was a, it wasn't wisdom. It was instructions and knowledge and commandments a negative law. But Sophia, which is what, you know, this is where we get the word philosophy, right? Philio means love and Sophie, Sophia is wisdom. So the love of wisdom is philosophy. So Sophia is a feminine gender. She's a woman and she has these teachings, not commandments. She has love, wisdom. It's different. Wisdom is a different thing than commandments. And so Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit and she will teach you all things you need to know in the hour in which you need to know it. Because Proverbs 8 says she is wisdom. Where are you guys going, buddies? Hi. So, all right, we've covered that. Now, and we do this so many times, we've done so many videos on this, but I want to get into something today that's going to completely and totally blow your mind well, wait a minute. I don't think we finished this. So, so, so if Yahweh then, if we can determine, and we can, and, and it's not just some places, it's, it's absolutely clear from verse to verse to verse, from the beginning to the end, there's no contradictions. Yahweh is the Old Testament deity, the liar and the murderer. And if he's the God of hate, the judgment God, the devil, the adversary, right? The adversary is the one that takes you to law. Right? That's what we call lawyer today, your adversary. Jesus is our advocate. It's a, that's, so, so the devil, the adversary, is the one who, who takes you to court based on some law and some legality. They get you. All right? So the adversary is Yahweh. And um, if we know that and we can come to that understanding, and I think all my subscribers know that and anyone who wants to research it will find out then how is it that the adversary Yahweh condemns Lucifer if Lucifer is also on you know um, if Lucifer is the devil how why would the devil be against the devil Jesus said his house will not stand and Lucifer doesn't mean darkness or the devil Lucifer means the light he said yeah but he was a blasphemer Dave he wanted to make himself like the most high that's exactly what Jesus did Jesus came to the world and said, I am like the Most High. I and the Father are one. Ye are one with me and I am one with the Father. And we are one. And all the universe is divine. Which Yahweh declared was blasphemy and he was murdered. He was found guilty under the law of Yahweh and crucified because cursed is anyone who is hanged upon a tree. And if you were cursed by the law, if you were found to be accursed, Anathema, according to Yahweh, you had to be hung on a cross. Other crimes, you could be stoned or beheaded. But Jesus was crucified because he was a blasphemer. 
It was the worst thing you crime you could commit. Anyone who blasphemed Yahweh was immediately destroyed, immediately put to death and hung upon a cross in public so that everyone would never do it again. So Jesus was condemned by the Sanhedrin, by the law of Moses, and they condemned him by the law and then hung him on a cross. The Bible says whoever looks upon him, remember that serpent that was hung up on a cross in, in the Old Testament? And whoever looked upon him was saved. So it says, so too now, anyone who looks upon Jesus, who is in the likeness of that serpent upon the cross. What is that? That's the the death of the body. The flesh was crucified. And he um, became born again. He raised his... He, he went to heaven to his father. Like the Most High, he became. He sat at his right-hand side. So, Lucifer is accused of all of that. That prophecy in Isaiah chapter 14 about Lucifer is a prophecy about Yahweh and his law condemning Jesus, sending him to hell. We have the same kind of story in Isaiah 53 where it says that, that he died for our sins and he was beaten by his stripes. We were healed. Well, we know that was Jesus. But who beat him? The law, Yahweh. And it says in there that Yahweh condemned, in Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, Yahweh condemns him and it says that he took pleasure in, in uh, murdering him. So it says that in Isaiah 53. He took pleasure in condemning him and, and killing him. So, I'm only pointing this out to start with today because I want you to understand just how many things are backwards now already. And these are the big things. Okay, we've got what, what people think is the father is Yahweh due to the fact that there's been a great apostasy. Jehovah's Witnesses come in and started, they took, uh, the name Yahweh wasn't in the Bible, but Jehovah's Witnesses who followed the Judean Masoretic scribes that were a thousand years A.D. after Christ. You're right? A thousand years after Christ. All Christians followed the Septuagint version. Did not have Yahweh in there. But thousand years later, these Masoretic Jewish scribes who did not have a Sanhedrin were not authorized by any Sanhedrin or any, any, you know, divine council or anything. They took it upon themselves in this scattered and apostate condition to lie, as it says in Jeremiah 8, 8, the pen of the scribe, the lying pen of the scribe. You think you have Torah, but you have the lying pen of the scribe. And they sent, as Yahweh does, and oftentimes, as it says in Chronicles and Kings, he sent his lying spirits to the prophets. As it says in Job, he sent down his, his, his evil angel to torture Job, who was blameless. See, you've been lied to. Human beings are blameless, according to our Father in Heaven. Okay, we're blameless, without sin. We are being tortured by this Yahweh who sends, sends his demons down here to torture us. The Bible says we are blameless. So, we have everything backwards. We have this person that we claim is our father, and we, we say his name is Yahweh, and that is really, according to Jesus, the devil. Because the Judean people, the Sanhedrin, they, they acted under the authority of one deity, only one. There were no others. He said, I am God, there is none else. My name is Yahweh, that is my name. And Jesus, looking at that Sanhedrin, says, you are offspring of vipers. Who's he talking to? The Sanhedrin. Okay, that's not a snake, that's not a serpent. That's a viper. It's a different thing. There are two different serpents. There were two serpents in, the, in Eden, according to the Sumerian tablets, according to the Bible, according to all these other things. You've never been told all of this. Jesus was not... It's sometimes called a eagle. We, we call it an eagle today. He was there on the tree, an eagle. But sometimes it's called a feather-plumed serpent because Jesus is the resurrection, the good shepherd, Tammuz. Tammuz was the good shepherd. 
Tammuz is written in Ezekiel. They were weeping for Tammuz. Guess who Tammuz was? Tammuz is the son of Semiramis and Nimrod. Who is Semiramis? Mera, mermaid, Mary, Meramis. Well, that's the same woman, Miriam, that was Moses' wife. It's Mary in the New Testament, which is a word in Greek that means Lord, by the way. It's a title. It's not a name. It's a high priestess title. Okay, It's the, it's the title of the high priestess. So, Semiramis, she was married to Nimrod. Nimrod died. So now she couldn't have a child. See, it's not talking about a virgin, somebody who's immaculate virginity forever. How could you have a child? Mary had Jesus. Well, after that, she couldn't have been a virgin. She had a baby. We assume Jesus was born. He was a baby, came out of her womb. So how could she be a virgin? It's not saying that kind of a virgin. It's talking about a woman. It's the same story that we've got in every nation on the face of the earth, whether it's Egyptian, Babylon, Syrian, Bible, every, every, everywhere. This is the, the pagan teachings, the many deities, not the one who is the God of wrath, but the real deity, the father, the mother, and the son. And this mother gives birth because her husband was dead and she could not have sexual relations. So she produced a child without the aid of her husband. And how does she do that? By raising up her husband long enough, in some stories, just the phallus, she gave it life. Then she did some sort of rebirth ritual or whatever and, and was impregnated. And the son that was born, Horus, you know, I-H-S is the name of Jesus upon his plaque, right? You always see the I-H-S. Well, that H is a capital E. So it's I-E-S, E-S. And it stands for Isis Horus Seb. Seb is what we get, Joseb. Joseph, Joseph, that went down into Egypt, the same Joseph, but now is this child down in Egypt that gives birth, but he dies. Remember Osiris? Well, Osiris is another name for this father. Isis was her husband. In Nimrod, it was Samiramis and Nimrod, but it, you know they all have their, their, their words. Well, the child was Horus. Isis, Seb, Joseph, is also called Osiris. So it's also called Orion. Nimrod was the mighty hunter. Orion's the mighty hunter. Look it up in astrology. Orion's also Orios or, or, or Osiris. Osiris in Hebrew is La Osiris. Osos, Osiris is the Egyptian. In Hebrew, it's La Osiris or Lazarus. Lazarus was raised from the dead. And it's the same story. Remember, it was Lazarus that went to paradise. And he saw uh, Abraham in the bosom. He was with Abraham in the bosom position with Abraham and eating and dining with, with Abraham. But there was a rich man that went unto hell and he wanted to, him to send a, an angel down with a, a little drip of water you know, to cool his tongue. Remember, he was, he was in this blazing hell. But he saw Osiris over there in paradise. Okay, Laosiris. So this is the same story. Jesus was Horus, not Osiris. Okay, now we've talked about Caesar being another name for Osiris, Caesar. And in many different nations and languages, it's spelt differently, but it's always the same. Uh, the Tsar, the Khazar, the Caesar. Osar, Ashar. It's always the same name, just spelled differently. So this is the father of the deities. And this is why Jesus was named this. It was an anagram for Isis, Horus, Seb, Eus, which is the name he is in Arabic, Isa, in Hindu, Isa. And in our original Bibles, it was Isa. There was no Us at the end. That's a... Uh, just syntax on the end. You can say isun. In fact, the Greek Jason, scholars say, is the original Jesus going to get the golden fleece. A fleece is a lambskin. 
and there's Hercules in the boat and he wrestled with the serpent and conquered the serpent. Well, this is the viper. So anyway, when you see that all of this stuff that we've been told is, is everything is backwards and upside down. So for instance, they call us um, pagans and, and make us feel like we're, we're evil, heathen. But the word pagan means the, the peoples, all the nations, the 10 tribes that were not Judeans. There were Judeans and then the pagans. Judeans and the nations. And the gospel went unto the nations. Sometimes another word for it's Gentile. We're the Gentiles. We're not Judeans. And Paul says, don't go back again like a dog to its vomit to that, to the Old Testament. We're not under any law. Right? They want to be circumcised. They want to, you know, they, they came to Jerusalem to hear about these matters. You've got to keep the law of Moses and and, and go back to circumcision and Judean religion, the old covenant. And, and the apostles said no. So we've talked about all this. My subscribers know about most of what I'm kind of rehashing a lot of stuff that we talk about here on this channel. For those of you who may be new. But what we're going to get into here is something that will blow your mind. Because everything we've been talking about would, would blow your mind. But we've been doing this for 10 years and learning about all of this. And then, like I said, about three or four months ago, we started talking about this whore of Babylon. We started finding out some things that just insane truths that we did not know. That this holy whore, Mary Magdalene, Magdala means the tower. So Mary of the tower is another way of saying a priestess in this temple. And the tower that she served at is the same Semiramis that you hear the stories like the two Babylons which is what started all this propaganda saying that somehow Christianity had apostatized and went back to paganism well, the truth is, is that Christianity was paganism we were the nations Jesus said go unto the nations the lost sheep of the house of Israel because there were ten nations there's only twelve nations in the universe 72 souls came out of the loins of Jacob those 72 are the 72 nations and all came out of the loins of Jacob. You can break it down to 72, but you go further up the line and, it, and, and you can go up to the pinnacle of it, this pyramid, and there's 12. And then further up, there's three. There's an inner circle of three. And the very top is the, is the divine being who is a whole. And we're all parts. We're all one in this divine being. And so this Holy Spirit, we're the body, the temple of the living deity. And we house this temple. So we are the Sanhedrin. We are the voice, the vehicle, the Merkaba of the divine being. We are the council of the Elohim, which is plural. And Jesus said, you are Elohim. Scripture cannot be broken. You get wet a little bit? Yeah, cool off. Say hi. Look at my pretty colors. <laughs> But, um, so, what we're going to explain today that this harlot, now you've probably heard about uh, Tam, uh, let's see, um, you've heard about, well, you, so you know, in, we've been lied to about this whole thing that we were pagans, it really just means we're the nations. And we didn't worship in Jerusalem, we worshiped Bethel. Here's the thing that's going to blow your mind. Beth El, Beth means house, so the house of what? El. The house of El, the deity El is the true deity, not Yahweh. Jesus on the cross said, Eli, Eli, Allah, Sabachthani. My El, my El. El, Eli, or Eli, the I on the end means my. So, my El. Jesus said, my El, my El. He did not say Yahweh. Never, not one time. Jesus said about Yahweh, your father. But he never spoke his name because it's, it's, it's disrespectful to even utter the, the, the name of the devil. Jesus never uttered his name. Never gave him any recognition whatsoever. But he did mention his father, El.
some people out there. I think they might be concerned that I'm filming them or something, so I'll kind of film the other way direction. They wave, though. have a, a show right here in front of us while we're trying to talk about some deep spiritual things, huh? And now we're creating waves. Well, I don't know what they're doing, fishing or something. Anywho, um, so, <laughs> this is so con con convoluted and complex, it's very difficult to spit this all out, guys, but <clears throat> where were we? Um, so, uh, we've been lied to. Uh, we're taught that everything that has to do with Babylon's evil. And, and, and this harlot in Revelation 18, she's got a cup in her hand and she's got this filthy blasphemies and, and it sounds so terrible. It sounds like it's Jezebel or something and it sounds like it, it's probably a bad thing. Remember, Jesus, this is going to come as a surprise, married Mary Magdalene. Mary, a high priestess of the Tower of the Priesthood. Well, she was considered in the Old Test in the New Testament, she's called an adulterer. Okay, that's also very similar to a harlot. That's what that really means. It, was a, it wasn't just an adulterer, she was a prostitute, is what they call her, or a harlot. That's what Mary Magdalene was called. But again, we've been lied to. That never had any derogatory meaning. It was she was a high priestess. It means she was holy. The reason why she was being condemned under the law of Moses is because they condemned those teachings of Babylon. You can find this all the way back in the Old Testament um, where the first mention of Babel is given. And it said that they were trying to build a tower. Ah, uh, there's the tower to God. Right? Through, through, through works. Christianity gets this all mixed up. Oh, they were trying to get there by works. Well, be consistent. If we don't get there by works, then we don't keep the law of Moses, do we? But yet it was Yahweh who made the law of Moses that came down and made them in confusion to stop the building of the tower. The tower was a good thing to become like God. Remember, Adam and Eve partook of the knowledge of good and evil. That's a bad thing. No, that's good. On hee -haw, remember that? Oh, no, that's good. That guy used to tell stories. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. See, everything's backwards and upside down because they were trying to get to the divine being to make thyself like the Most High. Oh, they were condemned under the law of Moses. Oh, Yahweh came down and confounded their language. Well, what kind of deity doesn't want you to have knowledge to become like God, knowing good and evil. He admitted it to Adam and Eve. Oh, look, they've become like us. Us? What, plural? There's more than one? Yeah, you just spilled the beans there, Yahweh. You, you admitted it. There's more than one deity. You're the blasphemer, not us. Because Adam and Eve were made in the likeness and the very image of the divine being. What does that mean? It means they were very divine, of very divine. This is the same thing it tells us about Jesus, who is the exact similitude and likeness of the divine being. The exact similitude, that means the exact likeness, the image of the divine de being. Does that mean he's another deity? It means he's another person in the one divinity that is that inhabits the universe. So all the universe then is part of the one divine being. And the anything else is just an unreality. The devil is just darkness. The devil is an illusion. The lower ego that creates all this illusion out here. Who's wrathful and angry and says, Don't you dare become like me. Don't you dare wake up and open your eyes and realize, you know, that you're, you know, recognize Christ on the way to, you know, after the resurrection. They open their eyes and they saw him. They recognize Christ. Remember in the Garden of Eden, they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked. Why? Because it says that Eve was deceived. 
That does not mean she was wrong to eat. She initiated us all into these mysteries. She was deceived because she thought that she shouldn't have done it. She thought she was deceived. Remember, Yahweh is the deceiver, the adversary. By law, he, he tempted them, the tempter. Our Father in Heaven does not tempt any man with evil, neither can he be tempted with evil. The brother of the Lord James says. It was Yahweh that tempted man with evil. And it's proven that Yahweh is the one who lied. As Jesus said, your father's a liar and a murderer. His lie murdered us. Because you see, you can't really kill us. Because we're immortal. We're, we're like deity. We're made in his image. Sons and daughters of the Elohim. Right? The Benai Elohim. That's what we are. All sons and daughters made an exact likeness, like a fa like father, like son. We're exact duplicates. We're all divine beings. It was the illusion, the lower ego, and its pride that says, "Oh, only I am divine. Only me. Get down and worship me." Our Father in heaven never demanded worship. Jesus never demanded worship. Jesus said, "You're not my slaves. A slave doesn't know what his master is doing." But I've told you all things I've done. I call you my friends. Jesus said, I have set you free indeed. So, Babel means, Bab means gate, and it's the gate of what? L, the gate of L. See, this was the true uh, place, city, where mankind all, they all spoke one language. What happened, baby? Come here. Come here, babe. You okay? What you doing, babe? Come on. Come on up here. Here's the babies. Come on, babe. Here you are. Okay. Um. Yeah, I know. You're just a puppy and you don't understand what's going on. Come here. Come on. What happened? What's the matter? What's the matter? Are you scared? Oh, your first time? Mm. Say hello. <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. So it was the the gate of El. Remember what we said? We've been saying so many times. There was Jerusalem, and then there was Bethel. Bethel, or Beth House of El, was in the northern ten tribes. Jerusalem was in the southern, where they worship for the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. So there are different words in different cities that are called different things. The Beb El is Bab is gate. Now the world wants you to think they lie a lot. They want you to think that the name the Babel means confusion. It doesn't. Bab means gate. El means the divine being. There's no confusion there. The only reason why we call it the city of confusion, not because of the, the word Babel means confusion, but because Yahweh came down there and scattered the language. Because Yahweh deceived Eve and made her think that she had to put something on. She was ashamed of herself. Put her under a curse, under a law. Made her think she needed to be atoned. Now in Hebrew, the word atonement means cover. So Yahweh killed an animal, death, because he said, you are sinners now. you got to kill something in order to make me happy. You know, the, the, the savory, the smell of the, the blood and the, and the sacrifice was a sweet smelling savor to the Lord. You must kill somebody. There's no forgiveness unless there's bloodshed. Why? Because in order to take that animal's life, you have to shed its blood. And then you take the hide and cover you. And that's atonement. You get temporal salvation, but it is not eternal salvation. It is a cycle of death and rebirth. Murdering, dog eat dog, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Yahweh introduced the lie, caused shame and guilt to be upon mankind. Okay, so just as Yahweh said, do not eat from knowledge in the garden, he also told mankind who were all of one language, do not become like God and build a city or have an advanced, you know, have knowledge Learn, grow, and become and advance like until you're an adult and mature, you know, of age and you become an heir, right? You're just children, even though we're 
we're heirs, we're, we're still children, so we don't have the, the throne yet, but we are heirs. But Yahweh didn't want, ever want us to grow up, and he wanted to keep us as slaves and never allow us to open our eyes and recognize the Christ in us. So he lied. His, his game is deception and violence and wrath and condemnation. Now, he has no right to give his condemnation or wrath, except we can give ourselves the condemnation or wrath, which is guilt. And only if we're deceived. So he deceived Eve, and she was thoroughly deceived. Now, go down after the flood. They're building again. They're trying to get to the divine being with what? Unity. Isn't that what we want? Unity. Don't we want to get through the gate to get to El, Babel? Isn't that a good thing? Yes, it was. And they had the high priestess, Samiramis, and she gave birth to the son of God, Tammuz. But Yahweh didn't like that. And Ezekiel says they're weeping for Tammuz. Ooh. Well, Tammuz is also Bacchus, sometimes otherwise called Dionysus. Dionysus turned the water into wine. Dionysus, or Bacchus, the temple of Bacchus, is up in Syria. And the widow of Syria... Elihu raised up her son, the widow's son. And so did Jesus, the widow of Nain. Who is the widow of Nain? Jesus' mother, the widow. Who is the widow? Samiramis. Why is she a widow? Her husband died. Therefore, she became the virgin and gave birth to Horus. Well, that's in Egyptian. But she gave birth to Tammuz, Bacchus, Dionysus, or Isa. Dia is deity, Zeus, Dias. David, there's all these different names. Divine, deity, day, theater, to see, a spectacle, the light, right? The sun, the soul, right? So all these names represent light, day, the good, the good side. Lucifer, the light. The bad deity is the darkness, right? The fear, you must hear him. The judgment, the hate, the wrath. Our Father's love. He is hate. So he's making a tower to advance us to become and mature and grow and to learn. Because this is what Jesus said. This means eternal life. Oh, no, no, not Yahweh. He says, cursed be you. You'll not enter into my rest. He swore in his wrath. Now, I'll not pardon your sins under the third and the fourth generation. But our Father does. He forgives. Seventy times seven. He makes the sun shine on the righteous and the so-called unrighteous. And the rain comes down on the righteous and the so-called unrighteous. He forgives you every time. He's faithful in order to forgive you. Every time you make a mistake, you're his child. He helps you back up. He reaches out his hand when you start to drown. He pulls you out. He loves you. He is love, not hate. So, this means eternal life taking in knowledge, gnosis. We're Gnostics. Yeah, faith is part of the equation. But it's also more than faith. It is knowledge. His, this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit that comes from our Divine Mother, Sophia. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, mildness, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all positive things. There's no thou shalt nots. Love is an action of give it's an action of positiveness. Faith, kindness, gentleness. An action of controlling, self-control. All of these things, kindness and gentleness, love and joy, and grace. This is the knowledge of good and, and, and evil. Which is really the same as the knowledge of life. Well, how do we know that? Because he says, after they partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which Yahweh said will make you die, they never died. Jesus said, I offer you eternal life. Right? Why how? This means eternal life. He's going to tell you how. By taking in knowledge. By eating from the tree of knowledge, you get life. As long as you're not deceived. As long as you believe. As long as you do it with faith. So partaking of knowledge, if you're deceived... And if you have fear, and if you're following Yahweh, it leads to death. But it's important that we die 
Paul says that which is made alive is not made alive unless first to die. Jesus had to partake of flesh and blood as did his brethren. Jesus said, I'm going to take up my cross. Now come, take up your cross and follow me. You must die. Whoever will lose his soul shall gain it. So through the experience of death, the initiation into this world, we will have eternal life. And this means eternal life to taking in gnosis, knowledge of you, the only God. In other words, we must become like God. This is the goal. So at the Tower of Babel, which is what? The gate of El. Well, where is a gate? Usually on a house, right? As before you enter the house. So the gate of El or Babel was among the ten tribes at the house of El. They had a gate. You entered the gate to get to the house. You see, back in the days of Babel or the gate, they hadn't even entered the gate yet. By the time the ten tribes were there and Eliu set up the school of the prophets, they had a whole house. And Yahweh didn't like that. And if you look at the book of Amos, he tells you he hates Bethel, Gilead. He hates the prophets of Bethel, of Carmel, where, which is up in Syria, where Eliu and Elisha created the school of the prophets in Syria. And raised up the widow's son, the widow of Nain, which is the son of the divine being. Miraculously brought from death and resurrected eternally. He'd gone through the firstborn of many brethren, the first fruits, the first in all things, the first to die, the first to, to be raised up. The way shower who said, what I have done, I want you to do. Don't be afraid. I will overcome the world. Fear not. You will come after me. You will do greater works than I have done. We're going to follow him. Jesus said, you know, you know the way I'm going to my father. Prepare a place for you that where I am, you may come also. And I will receive you unto myself. We're going to be with the Lord in a different world in the kingdom of Babel. Where we can learn the knowledge of the divine being, not of God. That's a San, you know, Scandinavian, Norwegian, uh, Welsh word, or it's a Lombardic word, golden, that they put in the Bibles. That's not our deity. That's a false deity. I use the word deity because it, it's, it's, it's kind of the word we have in English. This kind of, uh, it's not like a name of any particular deity. It's just the divine nature, divine or deity. Um, but that deity comes from the Attic, Athenian, Greek spelling of Zeus. They called it Theos. This is where we get the theater and theology. And it's the study of ology, the study of Theo. Theo or Theos or Theun. Different syntax, but it's all the same Theo or Dia. Same as the word day. Uh, even, uh, well... Anyway, all of these words, even David, divine, all have relations to this word. So, the divine being is what we're trying to get to. And he was also known as Dia Isios, who turned the water into wine, had, had 12 disciples who went to hell and overcome the world, and the same as Bacchus. Now remember, the temple of Bacchus, the temple of Dionysius, is up at uh, Baalbek. That's the largest temple in the world. The stones weigh so many tons, there isn't a... If all the cranes in the world we have today, and all the trucks, and all the bulldozers, and all the equipment, and all the advanced technology couldn't lift one stone there at Baalbek. And we know that that was originally called the Temple of Dionysus, which is Isus, Dia Isus, the, the deity Isus, which is the son of Isis and uh, Seb, or Osiris. And this is the story of, of Lazarus. Remember, Mary, she said that uh, her, her brother had died. Well, this was Mary who, just like, you know, remember Abraham said his, you know, Sarah, Sarah was her, his sister. Well, it didn't mean that they were literally sisters. They were probably related, certainly from the house of Laban. Very closely related. We don't know if they were actual brother and sister or not. But the deities did that. They, they married their close relation, you know, because this is a story about Adam 
and Eve, come on, they're brothers and sisters, right? They're, they're, they're right back at the source. They married each other. And then Cain married one of his sisters, right? And, and Abel or, or Seth married one of his sisters. This is what this is talking about, the original divine beings. So Beth El is the house of El. Babel is the house of... And then Babylon means the kingdom of Babel. Now, why in the book of Revelation is this kingdom considered so evil? Because Yahweh has taken it over and confused it and lied. This represents the world we have today that is the Lord's world, that we can gain knowledge, that we can grow. But because of Yahweh and his laws or his lies, laws, lies, same thing, we're all deceived and we will not understand that we need to achieve that enlightenment, that gnosis. But instead, we stay and remain in the confusion. And the cup that we drink, okay? Remember this woman, she says, this, this harlot, which means holy, she says, I sit as a queen. I see, I shall see no mourning. A queen? Hmm. Well, didn't Samarimus sit as a queen? And didn't the Apostle Paul say that those who partake of the cup, which is the body and blood of Christ. It's not a bad thing. It causes damnation to people who drink it. Huh? Yeah, that cup that causes damnation to their souls, it's the actual sacrament of the Lord. Because they don't know what they're doing. They're in confusion. See, she says, I am no widow. I sit as a queen. Because she's going to have, even though she's a widow, her husband, Nimrod, which is, you know, uh, the mighty hunter, Orion, Osiris, same story. He dies. Isis brings him back to life. Mary Magdalene and Mary, they met, they went to the tomb, they anointed him, they hovered over the body, just like Nephites, Nephites and, and, and Isis. They hovered over the body and brought their... Osiris back to life. And then they had relations with this, the phallus and brought forth Horus, who is made in the exact image of his father, who sat upon the throne, or the light, the sun that rises with healing in its wings. His kingdom shall come like the sun that rises from the east and shines all the way into the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He is the Son, spoken of as the S-O-N many times, or a couple of times in the scriptures. And the Apostle Peter calls him the day star, and when it rises in your heart. Now, what is this rising sun? How is the sun could be good and could be bad? Because remember, Lucifer is the, is the morning star. Remember, our sun is a star. Peter says it's the, the dawn, the rising of the 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 star of the morning or the star of dawn when it the dawn star rises in your heart it's the same star but it's rising how is it that the same sun can be considered a devil because some you remember the bible apollyon is the devil the deity of destruction and yet apollos is the sun well here's the difference apollos is the sun setting it's called set in egyptian who killed his brother osiris Set is Saturn in Greek, who is has a war with Uranus and Zeus. And Set becomes Saturn, becomes Satan. So, in Greek, in our Bible, Jesus said this, I saw Satan. It's right in your Greek. It says Satan. No question about it. I saw Satan fall like a lightning bolt. Now, think about this. Lightning is light. Look at light. It's bright. It lights a whole panoramic view up when lightning strikes. But lightning comes from the top and goes down. It falls. Well, light's truth, no matter how you look at it, right? Lucifer's truth. We say that's the Lord. So a lightning bolt is truth, right? Because it's light. It lightens the whole world. Well, just for a split second. And then what? Well, it's usually dark when there's lightning, right? Because the clouds come over and gets gloomy. And that light is falling. It's not, it, it represents 
light that, that is fallen light. That's why he says it is fallen. And, and you, 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 you can read the whole parable there in, in Luke where it says they, they had authority over demons and devils and serpents and scorpions. And they said, oh, Lord, we've cast out the devils and they obey us by your name. And Jesus said, I saw, past tense, Satan fall. So Apollos is the sun setting, falling, but Jesus is the sun rising. And that's the difference. And the symbol in the occult world for the devil is a Z, which is a, a zigzag. There's two zigzags, which really is an S. And it's also the serpent, the viper, not the serpent, but the viper that Jesus talked about. It's a poisonous asp. And that, so that's the same as Superman. He's got that S on his sh front. Well, if you look, the original Superman had a snake head on the top of that S. And that is really like Zorro. It's a Z. They're the same character, right? Batman, the devil man, the vampire, Dracula. They're all the same character. They come from hell. And that S on their front is not an S. It's a lightning bolt and it's falling. It's truth that is apostate. It is the devil. So anyway, we're going to cover this a lot more. I see I'm over an hour now and I've just been rambling on and talking, talking, talking. It's really hard to, with the dogs running around and I'm kind of worried about them and I got mosquitoes biting me. And so it's kind of difficult to put all this together here today. But we're going to do a whole series on this and explain what Babylon is, what the devil is, the Antichrist. Um, and this, you know, I decided to do this today because I had just, somebody had sent me a, a, a video. These people were talking about how Christianity is apostate and we're following the devil now and Yahweh's the true deity and his name, Jesus' name is Yahweh and, and, and Christians have gone back to paganism. And I was looking at this and they were going by the two Babylons, which I've been trying to explain to you guys for years now is complete it's it's I, I i i am so shocked when i see how people could could not be aware not see be so blind to all of the evil that this god yahweh has done and the direct sentences in the new testament where jesus condemns the old testament says my law your law in your law it says but i say I don't condemn you. Moses does. Everyone's come before me. He's a thief and a robber. What kind of a deity would he ask for bread and he gives you serpents? All these things that Jesus said and did to show us the truth and reveal his grace and his love. And yet people could still be confused on this. But it's it's been a 2,000 year propaganda. Well, 1,500 years of propaganda. The apostasy happened in 395 A.D when they snuffed out the flame. And that was of the true priesthood, the Vestal Virgins, and the authority of the woman, and uh, the Melchizedek priesthood, priesthood, which is the um, Rex Secorum. And that was destroyed. And now all we have is the Pontifus Maximus, which is the high priest. And he is, he is falling and gone after this apostasy. They no longer understand that this fallen angel is 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 the devil and the rising sun that they call paganism is the truth everything that we've been taught is a lie and it's upside down and backwards everything that they're teaching in the world and in christianity i, I will go so far as to say this if you're a christian and you don't know any difference you're okay because the lord loves all of his children and we we don't sin when we do things in ignorance but once you begin to understand this and you realize the truth Careful, baby. That little puppy's swimming. You all right, honey? Yes, puppies can swim too, huh? Once you understand this and you continue to be a Christian and associate with people and not, not correct them, then you're not a preacher of the gospel. But you've now become a member of the Church of Satan. You are now promoting this evil you've gone back this is what it says in the bible when jesus said he says when i come will i find faith on earth he says he, he told him a parable when i am when i arrive 
I've told you, I've given you these talents. I've told you to go and, and, and use the talents wisely and feed the hungry and clothe the, you know, the, the naked and all this. But when I come and, and I see that you've gone back and you began to beat your fellow servants and eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, and that confirmed drunkard that he's talking about symbolically is the old covenant. Going back to that old covenant God, the devil. He says, if you do that, I'll come in an hour in which you do not know and there shall be the weeping and the gnashing of your teeth. And you will not come out of that hell until you paid the last penny. And of course, that will be at the end of the thousand years because the Lord loves everyone and he's not willing any should perish. And hell shall be open and the last judgment will be a thousand years from now. And all, every eye shall see and every knee will bend and every tongue confess. And everyone will be saved because we're all saved in Christ. Just as in Adam all die, we're all going to be made alive in Christ. But right now, there is a first fruits that are awakening to these truths. And we've got to go out and tell the gospel to the rest of the world. So, I'm going to get up. And, uh, it's like the sun's kind of behind the cloud for a minute. So just for a second before that sun comes back out, because it's really hot. I'm going to walk down the road just a little bit and see what we got. Oh, it's hard to walk with these puppies. They jump right in front of you and you almost fall over and trip on them. <laughs> Come on, babe. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Puppies just don't know how to stay out from under your feet, do they? You have to be careful when you walk around puppies, I tell you that. Oh, well, it's a beautiful day. Let's go over here and look real quick and then we'll turn around, get back in the truck and go home and do it again, I guess. I can't wait till we start this series and I can kind of explain all of this in a, in a more uh, systematic way and we'll, we'll give scriptures and we'll read scriptures. And I bet you we're going to have to do three or four of these, you know, in a series. Because the world has never understood what we're about to show. I don't think the world has understood this in 1,500 years. And um, it's not that it's not known somewhere. People know bits and pieces of this information. But to put all this back together, what, you know what this is called? Synchronicity. That's it, really. Um, I just heard, I was going home the other day in my truck. And I had this Christian radio show on. Because... I hate listening to the radio. But ever so often, I get so bored out of my mind, I have to turn the radio on just for a second, see if I can find talk radio or something. And it was just person talking, but it was a Christian broadcast thing. And, and, and so it wasn't like a, a preacher, but, she, but it was political Christian talk or something. Anyway, they were saying that the uprise, the, the new uh, false teaching that's going around, that's subverting Christianity or whatever, is this thing called syncretism. And I'm like, what? This is the new thing? I only know two people in the world that teach synchronous, syncretism. And that's me and Santos Bonacci. So, uh, Santos, I guess we're changing the world. Uh, so we got to darn sure make sure we do this right. So Santos, please join with me and let us come together in unity. I know we have some differences of opinion, but that's what we've got to make sure that we're right on these little differences of opinion. Let us not be so intent on trying to say that the synchronicity or the synchronism of the truth, the great almighty truth is just about a flat earth. Come on. It's not just about a flat earth. And I know you probably just misspoke when you said Jesus was the devil the other day. So we'll forget that because a lot of stuff that you're teaching, Santos, is good. You're getting the word syncretism out there and you're kind of showing people that there's more to the gospel. But what we have to do is make sure we get this right because there's a lot of people that go on the opposite. See, so Christianity for about 1,500 years has been teaching that everything is good is bad and everything is bad is good. But what we've got to do is understand that, w that, that we've got to show them that, that what people thought was bad was really good. See, not going back to the thing where it's like, oh, well, if 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 everything is good is really bad, then we're supposed to be bad, right? We could just do whatever we want and, and have, you know, uh, 
you know, drunken parties and, and, and just believe in hate and, and evil. And because, hey, there's no law, so we can do anything we want. No, no, no. Paul says that is not what he taught. You know, if grace is good, then let us do evil that grace might come or something. This is ridiculous. See, the, the, what Christianity has done, or the devil has done to Christianity, is taught them all kinds of opposites to get them so confused that we don't even know what is right and wrong anymore. We're teaching that laws, where we condemn people and put them in prison the rest of their life for a traffic violation, that somehow or another that is law and order and that is good. And that's what, that's what, this one world government is going to be about getting the mark upon your hand or your forehead which is the law of Moses as it says in Deuteronomy and Exodus anyway I'm going to go ahead and go guys and get these puppies back in the car and we're going to take real good care of these three puppies that's all I got left and hopefully I'll get word and get my other two dogs back or the other puppies or something I mean I was going to give the little puppies away anyway you know uh, to some good homes I was going to keep three of them anyway I think it's just so synchronistic talk about synchronism that after, you know, two days now, I haven't seen my dogs and, and some of my puppies. Where's that one puppy at? Come on, babes! <laughs> uh, but I end up with just these three puppies. These adorable three little puppies, you know. So, I hope whoever took them is going to use, you know, take good care of them and Maybe they felt like, well, if they're going to, you know, maybe the puppies were, were out in the yard and they didn't know who they belonged to, so they just took them. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's heartbreaking, but, you know, I was looking at the other day and somebody was saying this, they showed this plant that looked a lot like this, and they said it's the most poisonous plant in the world or something. I wonder if that's what that is. Kind of doubt it, but I don't think so. I think they were looking about probably talk about hemlock or something but they have little white flowers like that oh well let's get back in the truck and go home guys didn't get much of a walk in i think i'll shut this camera off and take a little walk before i go we'll see you guys tomorrow have a good one